Good evening. Oh, good day. It's Alexor again. <laughs> With a little bit of a stupid build. Also a very fun build, if you can tell. <laughs> I'm having so much fun with this build. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, this is the Rain Havoc build. As you can tell, it rains fire from the sky on your enemies. And also fire with the fireballs. Not just from the sky. And it's a very lazy build. And I'm going to give you a preface here. It's not the strongest build in the game. And it's not even intended to do. And this is not an Impal Monolith because I'm still playing through. As you can tell, it's level 70. But I decided to share this one anyway. Because it's so much fun to play. <laughs> and Yeah, it, it does good damage, I would say. It's good enough, really. You can also do uh, Impal Monoliths, I'm sure. No problem. You just gotta be... <laughs> Classic sorcerer style, a bit more careful. You gotta kite a little, as you can tell. You you cannot stand in the enemies. You cannot do this with this build. You have to kite out. Especially in lots of enemies. Your resistance is, even though, see, I almost died there. Um, you cannot stand in the enemies. That's the only thing you have to do. So we go into... Actually, I actually can tell you about it right now. Never mind. How to play it is very simple. You have your media down here, currently does 25,000, it goes up to 40,000 damage, which is pretty good at level 70, I would say. Mainly you only cast this, the fireball, right click, right? It's 4 mana cost, um, I can also show you later how it's 0, we can do this as well. So what you want to do is, you run around, right? You kind of want to shoot when they are off screen already, right? You know, sometimes you can even just shoot like that, it's just, it's just right click by the way, I did nothing else. It's due to one item we need, right? One single item. You can sort of just predict, shoot down there, and see the <laughs> meteors actually hit them over there because the meteors choose the enemy themselves. They're pretty much homing. When you crit someone. Well, I think also when you are crit, I believe. Um, so yeah, you really just right click. That's what you do. You run around, you right click, and the meteors will be cast automatically sometimes too much as you can tell then your mana is all gone oh this is the enemy already okay if you need more damage you can activate your flame ward and you have three seconds 100 percent more fire damage you can even increase this you always got to dodge from these attacks you can also cast meteor yourself like in this case and you usually do this with bosses you just when they stand still or when they are in this area then you just keep hitting R and cast all these meteors down because they do a lot of damage. You don't need to wait for the fireball to proc the attack. So it's very simple, really. In between, if you run out of mana, you can, like if I do this right now, right, all the meteors, and I have no mana, then I can just click my focus. It has a burst, brings it back up fast, and then we can keep keep hitting with the fireball. Again, the flame ward is defensive. It's auto cast when you are being stunned, also, but it also gives more damage. It also does 100% more fire damage than if you activate it. So that's very, very useful as well. And teleport also gives you resistances. So we are not capped, capped on these, but um, you gain even more resistances if you teleport. I might change this build up a little bit later, but for now I want to share it because it's so much fun and it's so great. It's not min maxed. I'm not claiming that this is absolutely maxed out. But it is doing well. Like if you teleport, you gain resistances for a few seconds and cast speed buff. So um, also, if you teleport, the next attack is mana free. Yeah, like this meteor didn't cost any mana, so you can also play with this. But yeah, that's the playstyle. You have to kite. This is where WASD would be very nice in this in this game. So you can kite. Oops, you can kite and shoot like this on on the same direction. So you have to move and aim at the same time, especially against hard bosses. But in most cases, especially early, uh, even in the pop monoliths, you can just stand there and shoot them. Right click, just keep pushing down, right click, that's fine, you don't have to do anything else. As I said, this is almost free, so you don't lose mana from this. And with bosses, you just keep spamming R 
or whatever you put your media on. Very simple play, but very crazy. It comes down to this one item. Um, I'm gonna sh yeah, I can actually show you right now. The hopping of stars. You need this item. We go over items later in general, but if you don't have this, you can't run the build as it is, right? Because this is what activates it. Just so you know, if you don't have it, farm it first, then come back to this video. Let's go with the skills. Uh, let's start with Fireball. That's our first one. Um, very simple. What you want to have is crit. Because. Okay, actually, we can look at the item, what it says. The third part here. 8% chance to cast Meteor on crit if above 0 mana. So you need a high crit chance, so you're constantly critting with your fireballs. For each crit, you, had a, you have an 8% chance to rain down the Meteors. It sounds low, but if you could tell, while we were playing, this was happening a lot. <laughs> a lot. Sometimes so much, you end up with 0 mana. So you don't need to worry about it. You do this enough. You just put in the this one. You definitely need this one. This is key. And you want to go with these more projectiles. Uh, mana cost. No, this is pierced. This is also nice. You can put one point into this, so it actually pierces enemies. But then you also aggro enemies outside of the screen, but you can also kill enemies outside the screen. So you gotta figure this out yourself. You want this cast speed maxed, and you want the mana cost reduction. Mana sphere. This is what you need. Also, you want this flame ability. Enemy fire resistance reduction. These are mandatory, these three. You can also start with these, so you can spam it. And then you want to go for crits. Then you have to decide here. You either go, like you have to go to Fire Spray anyway, but then you can go with this. This is what most people, like there's not many builds like this, but I've seen a bunch that are similar. That shoots the fireballs in a sequence, but only in a straight line. The benefit is they fire faster. Also, they use this then. Hitting the same enemy with several fireballs triggers a flame burst around them. I actually want to try this on my spread anyway. So if I hit five enemies with my fireball back to back, it shoots the flame burst, which does 6,000 damage as it stands currently. And can you re reduce this to three per hit. This is why I do this. Then you just fire them fast right at the face and then this procs all the time. I liked the spreading ones better because then I hit more people in AOE, right? Especially monolith farming is much nicer with this in my eyes because then you hit everyone. Uh, this is why I went for this. Also, you need at least two points in this. Uh, base crit chance again. This one adds more projectiles, but now it costs mana. Without this, fireball is free. I went zero cost. I went for this because it spreads even farther, so I can hit more people. Judge for yourself what you want. Play around with this. Try this one, for example, and also in this. More projectiles that are fired. Um, try it if, it if you like it or if you want to go with the spread. That's up to you. Media is simple. You want to go down here. Additional media falls within the 4 meter radius, but media costs more mana. That's fine because we reduce mana here. So we definitely have to, you have to have this one. Otherwise, it's almost unplayable. Maxed out, less mana. And this just adds more fireballs to it and they have uh, more meteors to it and they fall faster. That's what this does. This whole area here. This is crit. Also nice. Like crit with the meteors themselves. And this one is additional fire penetration and cast before short duration. But we also wanted this. Casting fireball while you have to create a ball buff restores mana and grants ward. So you also want to have these two. You don't need to max it. You can if you want, if you have the points. But it's better to max the damage in my eyes. Uh, the create a ball buff is very nice. So you have this pretty much all the time and you gain a bit of mana back with that. Very key. So the media is very simple. You just have more of them. That's what you do. Instead of one. Flame War. Again, you want to go up this route first. Over here. To this. So you have two additional charges. You basically have two Flame Wards now. Then you go down here. Man Efficiency and Duration. Duration is key. And this. Fire Damage. So you have more damage while you do it. This one is when you are stunned. It's a nice addition, so you don't have to think about it. If you are stunned, it just auto applies it, so this is very nice. These one come these ones come last. It's just less damage taken and elemental resistance. That's cool, but you need this later. Teleport is very simple in its of in its of itself. That just gives you resistances, cold resistance and armor, fire resistance, lighting resistance, stun avoidance. Because we need resistances, the sorcerer is very squishy. 
So we also always need these. The set buffs stay longer. That's cool. Um, this is, you don't really need it. It's kind of a nice addition. When you teleport, the next cast is free. But since you're mostly casting Fireball, which is free, it doesn't really do much. But if you want, you can play around with it. One Meteor is technically free then, if you teleport. Shorter cooldown, you want this, because otherwise the teleport cooldown is very long. And you cannot be stunned if you have cast teleport recently, in the past 4 seconds. So that's pretty nice. You can just keep casting. This one I wouldn't really recommend. I tried it. It's not that good. Correct build link will be down in the description. And I'm playing around with this more, so maybe this will change going forward. Um, this didn't do much. But teleport is basically, uh, mostly really, you jump around and you gain your resistances. It's to, to dodge out of heat from enemies when too many people are around you. You dodge out, you gain your resistances. And um, or to, to cover ground, to get away from people. Or to get closer to them um, if they are running away. But that's all it does. It's mostly resistances and just... But it is very powerful because, again, the sorcerer is squishy. You need something to get out of damage. Focus, this is what I use, because sometimes you're just out of mana because all the meteors are casted, so you got to have a fast way to get your mana back. So you want to max this one first, mana regen while channeled, this four. Then you do this, because the burst is what gives you the most fast. After channeling for exactly one second, you gain a burst of 100 ward and mana. So these two first, and then it doesn't really matter what you go with. This gives you more if you are in negative mana, which happens a lot with the meteors, so that's cool. Um, out of that, it's pretty much irrelevant which direction you go, you can choose for yourself. Again, the focus really, you don't use it often. Now if I'm completely out of mana here, then I can just now cast my focus, see, and I'm already right back again, so I can keep hitting my fireballs. So that's what it does. Some people go with the snap freeze to freeze enemies. It's also useful if you are getting hit a lot, so it can be nice. I like the focus better, because then I can constantly cast my fireballs. Now for the passives. We actually go a lot into Rune Mass, and this isn't even maxed here, if you, as you can tell. Because the Sorcerer doesn't really have much that keeps him alive. You have the problem. So the first thing you always want to do is Intelligence and Resistances. Like Arcanist always, right? You max this one out first. Um, you don't even need this. It's kind of a nice addition, but you don't necessarily have to do it. You can also go more into this. But I think you have it because you have to put the points into get here. You want to have this max, cast speed, attack speed, right? You want to shoot the fireballs faster. Health mana, great. You're always low mana, or you don't have much mana, so this is helpful. Crit chance and crit multi. You can even go more points into this if you want. Um, it's not really necessary, as you could tell, and we did enough crits, but you can play around with it just fine. Now the sorcerer. You want to have these two for sure. This two is enough. You want to just get into this mana and mana region. And mana region per 100 max mana. This is crazy good. You need the region, you will be out of mana a lot. Okay? Intelligence, great, but also increased spell crit chance per intelligence is a 5 point bonus, so you want to put 5 in this. Okay, momentum gives you um, more cast speed, I believe. Yeah, cast speed and the. Yeah, cast speed, there it says. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't read it. it. Just gives you cast speed, so that's nice. Spell damage per stack. Okay, momentum duration. Then we go with Pyromancer. You also want to put five into these. I haven't done this yet because this also uh, leeches damage, uh, leeches health from your damage, from your fire damage. Pretty nice. You also kind of need this to get even to the last one. I have played it wrong with it a little bit, so it's not correct here, but build link in the description. Crit chance, it's for lightning, so we don't care, but we want to have this. Spell crit multi, 50%. You want to have that. Spell damage, mana regen. You want to have that. Then you go with cooldown recovery speed, great for teleport, and then with spell damage and triple if you have 200 maximum mana, which we have a lot easy. That's already it for the sorcerer. This can also be nice if you want to be more tanky. Vault based on your current mana when you use a skill, it costs at least 40 mana, which is the Meteor. This is the only one you can also potentially get for more defense. Everything else we don't need. Everything else is in the Rune Master. Mana, increased cast speed. Yes, please. Health, less damage taken from ignited, shocked, or chilled. Yes, please. They're all ignited always. Health region, mana region, doubled with 50 intelligence. Yes, please. Crit chance, 
We don't care about the rune world, that's irrelevant. We want the crit chance. This is not even maxed. You can put two to three in this. Intelligence ward gain on spell cast, and then also in this, health and ward per second. Additional ward per second with intelligence, also great. Later, you want to go into the inscribed instruments, because you run a wand, which is the Cinder Song. So we gain more crit multi, and you can even go in... You can even go in spell damage here, percentage, cast speed after traversal. If you want to go with this, if you teleport a lot, you can use that. You can go with Ignite Chance. All spell damage on the and crit on the next after a, a teleport. So you can play around with this. Also, you can also go with this area of area skills. So the immediate does more damage. Or like a, 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 f a bigger radius. That's up to you. But these are mandatory here because they give you the health and the damage you need with this build. That's pretty much it. All right. Now for the items. What's your, you really only need this one. This is absolutely necessary. But I would say the build really comes online with these two. You need these two at least, okay? I would say. Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense. This one is a great addition also. If you don't have them, just get some fire damage boots, boots I guess. But um, the hopping of stars is the main key thing. Increase Meteor Fall Speed. Plus one to Meteor Skill. Chance to cast Meteor, that is the key thing we want, as I said before. Less damage taken for each Meteor you have cast recently, also very nice. Mana gain and potion use, uh, that's cool. we are using it. And free potion slots if you have at least 900 mana, that's probably not going to happen. But um, yeah, the key thing is, again, this one, you need this, otherwise it doesn't work, okay? Easy. Now the Cinder Song, plus one to fire spells, spell fire damage, increased fire damage. Spraying flames on hit, also nice. Mana cost for fire spells. That's great. That also makes your fireball cheaper. And two projectiles for fireball. So, since the song is... You can play without it, but I think it's necessary, actually. Very much necessary. The fiery boots, they're cool. Fire penetration is nice. Fire damage. And you take less damage from crits, so this makes you tankier. So if you have these, definitely use them. They are great. And then you want to have... Either on the rope or on the helmet. You want to have plus three to medium or even four if you find one, a good one. With the spell damage. This one has, for example, the static orb or the media. And the static orb doesn't do anything, but I keep it because of the spell damage. So this is what you want to go with. Outside of that, the thing you scale this with is very simple. Intelligence always scales everything for the mage. So if you can slap intelligence on it, go with it. Other than that, spell crit and spell damage. See so spell damage, elemental damage. Fire is an element. So this works. Shred armor, pretty nice. I have one in mana region. You don't necessarily need it, but it was a nice addition. 40% is not insane, but it's good enough. If you have it, go with it. Other than that, spell damage, cast speed, intelligence, and the runes is nice. But spell damage really sort of buffs your damage. Now, I'm not really much focused too much on damage here, as you can tell by the items. Like I have mana regen, I have health, I have shred armor, elemental damage, I have endurance. Because the sorcerer is very squishy. And we don't gain much ward like much like the rune master. So you want to look into your resistances. With your items, you want to cap these, okay? I don't have this yet. Necrotic is capped. Okay. Poison is closed. Physical not even. Void sucks. The other ones are capped. These three, you don't need to put that much in this uh, in them as I have because with your teleport or even with focus or with a flame board, you gain a lot of elemental resistances. So you don't have to do it with items because you're casting these all the time. So I want to remove some cold and lightning resistances out of my items and move them towards physical, poison, necrotic, void. Because that's what you not get from your skills. My endurance is 43%. You want to cap this at 70 if you can. Uh, it's 60, sorry. I want to say 70. 60, it's close. But if you can, put it to 60. And fresh sure doesn't really matter that much there. Um, you want to look into defenses with this build. I might also look into a 
Like I would like a low life build as well that works with Ward and Ward retention, but the problem is that I lose the plus three to Meteor. Unless I put it on Exanctionus. You could do this as well. Might be insane. But basically, you want to have intelligence on all of them, right? Intelligence, they pretty much most of them have. Ten intelligence on this one. Mana region. Spell crit. You don't necessarily need this on your items because you have this a lot in your passives. So you can focus on spell damage or mana region or just resistances. Don't forget your resistances, okay? These are very important for you. You are squishy. You die fast. This one is not the best. I only have it because it has plus 84 mana. Everything else kind of sucks. I mean, plus six, to all, plus six to all attributes is nice. Attack and cast speed. Cool. You should have these, so this might work for you. If you gain something with mana on it, that's nice. Use them. Also, these are cheap. Everyone has these. Great. Very simple. Um, that's pretty much about the item. I will try a low-life build eventually. I don't know if I can do it. What you can also run instead of this is the Twisted Heart of Ukeros, which I currently have on my other character. This also helps because it also works with elemental skills, um, but then it's more, it gives you a ward. It makes it much tankier, if you have it. Okay, now for the idols. Idols are simple. Resistances, 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 everything else, crit. You want to always look for resistances. See, 15% void, 15% void, 16 physical, 17 physical. Okay, mana health, fine. 10 cold, it also has crit chance, that's nice. If you can have both on the idol, that's cool. Crit chance, elemental resistance. Elemental resistance, crit chance. Vault retention, yeah, elemental resistance. Cold, stun avoidance. I might change the cold one and lightning to other ones because I don't need this. You get this from your spells, as I said. Mana health. These are simple. Focus on resistances. I know the mage has cool ones that give you more fire damage and ages thing and stuff. You don't need this. You want to have resistances in your idols, okay? Because... Otherwise, you die fast. Now, again, this build doesn't really go into very high corruption, as I said, because the chance that this procs is still a chance. Sometimes I shoot fireballs like a madman, and it's just no meteor is happening. And in this time, because the fireball doesn't do much damage. It's what, 7,000, 8,000? This is 21,000? Up to 40? And it throws a lot of them down? So... The fireball is not your main damage dealer. It does some damage, it's not bad, but it's not the main thing. You want to have the meteors rain down on the enemies, okay? And sometimes, again, because it's an 8% chance on a crit, so you have to crit, and then from that crit it's 8%. So sometimes that just doesn't happen, okay? That's just what it is. So really focus on resistances. That, that makes you survive. That's a key thing. As I said, the build below will have everything set up perfectly. That's sort of the, the main idea you want to go for. Um, I have, don't have it here yet. This is the, the, the build I'm following as well. But yeah, it's a lot of fun raining down all these uh, meteors as you saw earlier in the gameplay. So this is mostly a fun build. I'm the guy. I'm not so much focused on min-maxing every single build to get the least last step of damage out of it i want to have fun and this was this build had me laugh so much when you just shoot your fireballs and sometimes it's just a million meteors raining down on them off screen somewhere so much fun check it out it's a great build it's still good it doesn't do very high corruption i don't think but it's a fun build check it out and let me know below what you think of it what you would like to change what you would change what you did for example any item i maybe didn't think of let me know like subscribe and i will see you in the next video Thank you very much. And now, rain some havoc.